someone made a suggestion in the comments for a future video. They wanted me to do a list of cards I wanted banned in Master Duel. I hesitated at first because honestly at this moment, there are very few cards I want gone from Master Duel. The only card I passionately wanted banned was Chris Tron Halleck and we all know what happened there. By the way, Konami, now that Halk is gone, can we please get Crossout Designator back at three or at least two, please? The other reason is because really think about it. Banless videos are tricky because you have to separate your own frustrations from the overall meta slash situation the game is in. For example, I despise Gateway of the Six for being the card used in the most tedious, long, and boring combo in all of Yu-Gi-Oh right now. But because that combo is so long and complicated, it's barely utilized. Even more so, I imagine, with the time limit changes. You also see plenty of people complain about things such as floodgates and archetypes such as flu, ignoring the obvious weak points in those, such as flu's tendency to brick, and floodgates being able to get hit by any decent back row removal. Come on, be adults. You can sacrifice one copy of Ash or one copy of Max C for some twin twisters. And of course, there were cards for decks that were heavily utilized that have since lost their peak usage, like Ad Emancipators and Drytron. So they're not really worth moaning about. So it took me a while to think of this list. And even then, I'd say the first one on this list is less so a needs to be banned and more so it probably should be banned in the future. But I needed room for my clickbait title. So enough dawdling, let's do this. All right, everyone knows that Chi Jiao Baron Pass for Sword Soul is the most lethal play in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! But what if I told you there was another monster you could bring out. <gasps> That's right, Arch Nemesis Protos. Protos is a dark worm monster that can be brought out by banishing three monsters with three different attributes from your graveyard. He can't be destroyed by card effects for one, and he has the ability to destroy all monsters of an attribute you declare on the field. And until the end of the next turn, neither player can special summon a monster of that attribute. Given that he's dark and can't be destroyed by card effects, he's an effective way of stopping heavy duty dark monsters, which as of the current meta, account for a good chunk of the best monsters in the game. So why is this Floodgate Beast the one I want banned the least? Well, simply put, there's only one powerful deck that can consistently bring him out, and that is Sword Soul. And even then, Sword Soul Emergence, which can search him out if you have a Synchro Monster already out, is typically going to be used to search out Long One instead. And Konami has kind of realized this by Sammy limiting Long One recently in a ban list update, which in all honesty is the right move. It keeps the deck plenty usable while making sure that Protoss isn't a guarantee on the first turn. But still, if I don't see him on a ban list, I won't have any reaction. But if I do see him, I might just have myself a little dance. Regardless of what type of player you are in Yu-Gi-Oh, control, beatdown, burn, defensive, combo, etc., I think it's safe to assume nobody likes stall decks, unless you're my buddy Kaiser. And I'm not talking about the kind where you can at least have interactions. I'm talking about the kind where they bring out Inspector Border or a Barrier Statue, add a ton of negates that do nothing but waste valuable time and data if you're on mobile. So without a doubt, these decks deserve a hit. But to what? Well, my answer is hit them so that they aren't nearly as consistent with Card of Demise. Card of Demise is a card that lets you draw up to three cards depending on how much is in your hand, with the trade-off being you can't special summon that turn, your opponent takes no damage, and you send your entire hand to the graveyard afterwards. Now, why is this the problem card and not something like the Barrier Statues or Inspector Border? Because whereas those are easily negatable on their own, Card of Demise allows for an easy opportunity to stock up on counter traps, power-ups, or dare I say, more drawing cards. Because yes, after you use it, there's nothing from stopping you from drawing more cards with other effects. So yes, after you already get a plus two card advantage, you can add even more. And this card is not just good in stall decks. You can also use this in other decks that don't rely on special summoning during that turn, like True Draco, Eldritch, or even Flu. This card is limited at one in the TCG, which makes a lot of sense as those type of decks aren't as effective in best of three, but in this format, this card is absurdly powerful and quite frankly, deserves the guillotine. And now it's time for a card that on first impression seems harmless, Union Carrier. A Link 2 monster that allows you to equip a monster from your deck to a monster of the same type or attribute on your field, giving them a thousand attack points. Sounds pretty innocuous, and most people who read that effect usually think nothing of it, until you realize the bigger picture. You can equip Eva to a Drytron monster and then sacrifice it to add two fairy monsters to your hand. You can attach Mist Valley Thunderbird to something while Apex Avian is out to get the infinite Omni Negate combo going. Or more deviously, you can use it with Buster Destruction Sword on a darker dragon monster to prevent your opponent from summoning anything from the extra deck. And there are probably so many more I'm not thinking of at the moment. Oh, and Ash Blossom doesn't even work on it as it equips straight from the deck or even a hand, meaning that even drawing the potential pieces isn't even that problematic. Did I mention this card is banned at the TCG and just recently the OCG? 
Do I have to say more? You ever read a card effect and think, ah, yes, anime bull You know, a card that's so clearly overpowered that it had to be used in the climax of a duel? Well, Ranga Miniad has that, and yet never appeared in the anime or manga. All Rongo Bongo is a rank 4 warrior monster who, depending on the amount of material he has, has different effects. One, cannot be destroyed by battle. Two, gains 1500 attack and defense. Three, unaffected by other card effects. Four, your opponent cannot normal summon or special summon monsters. And five, destroy all cards your opponent controls once per turn. Did you feel your skin wretch from hearing that? Because anyone who has to face this thing certainly does. Now, Rongo has gone up and down in terms of usability as summoning 5 level 4 warriors for him isn't easy. He was especially bad when Gossip Shadow was legal, but after he got banned it seemed like we wouldn't have to deal with him much anymore outside of niche combos. Until Konami introduced Numbers Evail, which allows an easy special summon with him, and Sales Ban, resulting in not having to detach his materials at the end of the turn like normal. Yeah, so if he's that exploitable, I think it's a sign he needs to go. He's banned in the TCG, and I really don't think he's worth keeping around in general. Plus, he's a key part in the Six Samurai never-ending combo, which makes me want to BURN IT ALL DOWN! They should have never made that grass look greener. The fact that it's legal in this game disgusts me, genuinely. You know that one ban card, Painful Choice? You know, the one that adds a card to your hand and then sends four to the graveyard? What if you had that on steroids? Grass, first of all, isn't a once per turn, already a great sign. And if you have more cards in your deck than your opponent does, you can send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard, so that you have the same amount as your opponent. Let's bear in mind, your average deck at the start of the game has 35 cards left. If you have a 60 card deck and you have 55 left, you'd be sending 20 f***ing cards to the graveyard. Anyone with a basic knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh! knows the sheer amount of decks that work with that. Dragon Link, Shadows, Dangers, Ad Emancipators, Elvish, Phantom Knights, Burning Abyss, Witchcrafters, and even Despia. It's such an obnoxious play as given a lot of cards that trigger in the grave, it means you are sitting through a ton of effects that do nothing but make you want to gouge your own eyes out. Ignoring how tediously long and boring that is, you're also dealing with a stupidly high card advantage right from the get-go which I thought Konami was trying to stop. So why the hell is this card free to go? Yes, you can Ash Blossom it, or maybe even use something like D-Shifter, but again, not once per turn. What a terribly designed card, and one that makes no sense sticking around. And given there are plenty of decks that can use this, including future ones, okay. I just think this card has no business being here. Touch Grass? No, 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 no. Torch Grass! <laughs> Damn it. Well, that's my list. Now, did you agree with that list? Or did you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Please subscribe. And oh yeah, you're probably wondering where Max C was. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, I swear.